All of November, we're observing Science and Technology Month with the aim of improving and creating greater strides in the sector while also looking at how far we've really come as a small nation. Through technology, we're actively tackling cyberbullying, supporting victims of crimes, and easing the process by which you do business. Today's Jamaica Magazine is dedicated to exploring some of these science and technological developments that have become so strongly knitted into the fabric of the island's development. So welcome. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. Let's meet back here right after the news. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, November 17. Further adjustments have been made to the COVID-19 containment measures to relax certain restrictions. They were announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in Parliament yesterday and will take effect on Thursday, November 18. Among them is the one-hour extension of the nightly curfew to 9 p.m. Gathering for places of worship, weddings and annual general meetings have been increased by 50 to allow a maximum of 100 persons. This, however, is subject to the size of the building. Events hosted by public bodies will remain at 50 for fully vaccinated persons. Burials and funerals can now accommodate 20 persons. However, the public gathering limit is still 10 persons. With the cooperation of our citizens, we have been successful in controlling our third wave and our numbers have remained relatively stable over the three weeks since I announced the current set of measures. However, as we have seen in other countries and from our experience, there is no room for complacency. If we let down our guard, we could easily see a reversal of this trend. Controlled entry protocols have also been recrafted. A negative PCR or antigen test is still required for travel to the island. Fully vaccinated travelers with a negative PCR test will not be required to quarantine, but those with a negative antigen test and who have been fully vaccinated must quarantine for eight days. Unvaccinated travelers with a negative PCR or antigen test are required to quarantine for 14 days. So just, just to be clear, if you, didn't take the, if you didn't take a PCR test as your pre-entry test, then when you come to Jamaica, you are under the quarantine rule. So if you are unvaccinated, you have to spend 14 days. If you are vaccinated, right, you can take the PCR test and be released. Or if you don't take the PCR test, you would have to wait eight days. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says Jamaica has put measures in place to control a possible fourth wave of COVID-19. Mr. Holness says he anticipates a possible increase in cases after the Christmas period, as well as the likelihood of outbreaks in other parts of the world reaching our shores. He is therefore urging persons to practice the COVID-19 prevention control measures and get vaccinated. Whether or not we experience a fourth wave and how significant it may be depends on us. The only sustainable way out of this pandemic is personal responsibility on the part of all our citizens. Personal responsibility to follow the infection prevention and control protocols, wearing your mask, sanitizing, social distancing, and ultimately the personal responsibility for taking the vaccine. Up to midday on Tuesday, a total of 1,054,653 doses of vaccines were administered on the island. From that, 481,900, or approximately 17.1% of the eligible population, are fully vaccinated. In addition, 19% of the student population is now fully vaccinated, with numbers as of November 12 showing 109,778. Still on vaccination, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is now offering both first and second doses of the Pfizer vaccine to Jamaicans 50 years and older. It was previously limited to children and adults who were awaiting their second dose from the first shipment into the country. Persons must make an appointment to receive their first or second dose of Pfizer. Appointments can be made on the Ministry of Health's website, moh.gov.jm, or by calling the National Vaccination Call Center at 888-1LOVE. 
That's 888-663-5683. Persons should take a government-issued identification, school ID for students, or letter from a justice of the peace. Those going for their second dose will also need to bring their vaccination cards to the appointment. In addition to Pfizer for those over 50, the Ministry of Health continues to administer the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines to persons 18 years and older. Come January 2022, the Ministry of Health will begin filing civil suits against the families of persons who have been abandoned at health facilities. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton made the disclosure during a recent sitting of the House of Representatives. It is unfair for persons who need a hospital bed and cannot get one because it is occupied for, for multiple years by persons who would have been released but have nowhere to go. I believe that the state has to maintain compassion for those persons because they are victims. But we should not confuse the compassion we show uh, to those persons um, by extending it to the family members who exploit those persons' situations. According to Dr. Tufton, there are currently 174 social cases in hospitals across the island. He says case management probes reveal that families identified for these individuals can support the care and treatment of the social cases but have refused to assist. We know of cases of persons who are receiving pension from overseas but relatives have refused to use these funds to support their relatives in hospital or indeed in other care. We know of instances where persons have been abandoned in hospital and relatives have rented their properties and refused to use these resources to care for the owners of the property. Dr. Tufton says family members will first be engaged in dialogue and legal action taken if necessary. The productivity and efficiency of 265 government and quasi-government institutions are expected to be bolstered with the infusion of Geographic Information Systems GIS technology. This as the National Spatial Management Division has secured a new licensing agreement with the Environmental System Research Institute, ESRI. The agreement will provide GIS resources to the institutions, including 179 educational entities. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change, Dr. Alwyn Hales, made the announcement during the 11th GIS Business Executive Forum 2021 recently. Dr. Hales says GIS and geospatial information management are critical to Jamaica achieving its Vision 2030 National Development Plan. These technologies are critical to the day-to-day -day deliverables of a wide cross-section of ministries, departments and agencies of the government of Jamaica. GIS technology is used by planners, business persons, academia, policy makers across our island and indeed around the world. Geospatial information dictates where we build, how we build, where we put necessary infrastructure to capitalize on, and manage our resources. The forum forms part of GIS Awareness Week being held under the theme Geospatial Technologies Navigating the New Normal. And finally, Jamaica's economic recovery from the disruption of the COVID-19 pandemic is expected to speed up with the staging of the Explore Do Business Jamaica Virtual Conference. The Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, is hosting the two-day conference today and tomorrow. At a recent JIS think tank, JAMPRO's Vice President of Marketing, Gabriel Heron, said the conference was organized to stimulate global interest in a wide range of sectors. Agribusiness, energy, infrastructure, logistics, tourism, cannabis, manufacturing, and of course, the creative industries. It will, it, it, it will engage, it will entail over 30 sessions, discussions, panel discussions, success stories, investor pitches. So it will really range um, to allow investors and potential participants, attendees, a more immersive and engaging experience. It is a virtual experience. As part of the conference, participants will access a virtual interactive business event portal for a segment dubbed Jamaica Experience. Persons may get on board by logging on to explore.dobusinessjamaica.com. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.
The Cannabis Licensing Authority is committed to supporting the creation of a regulatory framework for the growth and sustainability of Jamaica's medical cannabis industry. We carefully assess application forms for businesses and individuals interested in becoming partners in the industry. Along with other ministries, departments of government and agencies, the authority endeavors to preserve the integrity of the industry through compliance. This is all done to ensure that the industry is operating in conformity with Jamaica's international obligations. Call or visit our website to find out more about the work of the Cannabis Licensing Authority. Cybersecurity is a global problem that requires a response on the same scale. And even with the increased use of technology, the importance of education on the issue is ever increasing. Well, here's our government response through the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team. Learn more about cybersecurity trends in Jamaica and appropriate responses. <music> Cybersecurity trends, though ever-changing, are a constant in today's society, even more so due to the increased usage of technology to attend school, conduct meetings, carry out work tasks, and basic day-to-day -day necessities. There are a lot of trends out there, but as far as the online space, Phishing is one of the enduring challenges out there and the trend these days is to actually utilize COVID-19 resource sites as a platform from which to launch these attacks. They look very much like the official sites for a lot of these companies and if you're really not wary, you will actually not realize that there are subtle changes such as misspelling, such as a graphic that is not where it should be. So phishing, what really is it? According to our research, it is a type of social engineering attack often used to steal your user data, including login credentials and credit card numbers. As Lieutenant Colonel Sterling just explained, the hackers can replicate a trusted website. They can even trick you into opening malicious emails and messages. Once you do this, by clicking the link attached, you could very well be given the hackers access to your private information, so be careful. Additionally, we've seen an uptick in ransomware. And this is where this usually starts as part of a phishing campaign. And when you have fallen victim, the end result is that the attacker gains access to either your device or your network, and they encrypt your files and ask for ransom. But we're also seeing an increase in crypto jacking. This is where hackers will actually steal your cryptocurrencies and they will take them to exchanges and cash out. So as Jamaicans become more adept at buying cryptocurrency and supporting our own digital currency issued by the central bank, they have to be more wary of some of the pitfalls of crypto jacking online. Now, we have seen also a good trends where the use of HTTPS for web-facing resources has increased by about 174% within the region. We have also seen a downward trend in malware infections because more persons are installing antivirus and anti-malware software and are generally becoming more responsible in their use. The need for security, if you really measure it, is costly. But the need for, but the existence of a lack of security can be even more costly. Now, for the individual, there are free apps within the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store that you can use to help to secure your devices. And sometimes for a nominal cost, there are some that you can also use that will do a better job. Now, what works for you is really going to be up to what you do online and the devices that you have. But the risk of not having any protection at all is one that cannot necessarily have a dollar value place to it. If your device gets encrypted by ransomware, what is the cost of it? Do you have backups? So that's another thing that you need to do to back up your device, not just the settings, but also your data on the device. It is very easy to get 
pirated software or so-called free software from some download sites and torrents but usually they come with unwelcome and hidden residents that will take over your devices and will sometimes cause you grief so while it does have a cost attached to it you have to do the cost benefit analysis what is the cost of not having security versus having security and i can almost assure you that when you really do it the cost of security will work out way cheaper than not having security Among other things, we're using technology to support children who are victims of crime. A leader in this is the Justice Ministry's Victim Services Division. The unit recently launched an animation bundle to provide therapeutic support for these children, and the rewards have been tremendous. See for yourself. Children sometimes see too much. At other times, they hear too much. And many of them feel too much. There are situations where children become victims of crimes, seeing, hearing, and feeling too much of its effect. The hurt and trauma can linger without the proper intervention strategies. This is where government's Victim Services Division comes in. The VSD is having a far-reaching and sweeping impact as it provides help to this vulnerable group. The Victim Services Division is that division within the Ministry of Justice which is responsible for coordinating the Ministry's support base for victims of crime. Anyone can become a victim of a crime. Victims of crime are often persons who suffer just about any crime you imagine. There are sexual crimes, small children, there is robbery, there is unfortunate, there is murder. We are in the primary victim though has deceased. The secondary victim, which is the family members, are there for the support that we give. We recognize that the, our victim population was getting younger. Whilst we still would have to communicate with them some of the complex concepts that are a part of the therapeutic process. Hence, we needed to find a medium that will allow for us to use their type of language, colors and sounds and movement well, that medium, the ministry found, was the use of an animation bundle. It is comprised of eight short films that offer therapeutic intervention and lessons to children who are victims of crime. Your daughter was almost abducted today, but she was smart. She ran away. However, there is more she could have done. Walking with headphones on is a dangerous habit. You must be alert. Pay attention to your surroundings and the dangers around you. Our animation strategy involves the creation of a character called Justy. And Justy represents all that is good and right about what should be done when a child is faced with a difficulty. A child seeing the animation immediately will be able to interact. They are short animation films, so the attention span of the child is not hampered in any way. And our intent is not just for them to watch Justy, but to become and to embody the teachings, the values of Justy in order to help other children. I have not left the house in over three weeks. I came here to work as a helper, and now he tells me that I'm going to work at a nightclub. Put these on and get ready. We're leaving for the nightclub in half an hour. Anyone can be trafficked. It does not matter your age, gender, or race. We also ensure that we would have elected to choose specific topics which were current and will remain current. Um, abduction is a reality. The matter of being bullied is a reality. Human trafficked is another reality, and among others. There are eight animation films, and these are current we have seen over time. Uh, we have had the opportunity to, to have children and literally vet the animations and we are very comfortable that they have the content that will 
re reflect um, concerns that children would want to share with their friends. But why was the Victim Services Division so sure that these animated videos would have or will even continue to pull the required effect? The process of developing an intervention involves doing an assessment. We would have had the benefit of over the last 20 years, 200,000 victims that we would have been able to assess. We would have had clear understanding of what needs to be done to provide support for the victims of crime, hence the program VSD. What we did was to use that 20 years of experience. We have a cadre of trained social workers, psychologists, various levels of competencies to work with children. And we have just managed to package this entire expertise um, into eight animations. I am absolutely confident that they have what it takes to make a difference. So even in all the challenges, the Victim Services Division is working to provide psychosocial support for victims of crime. The division is committing its unit to the advancement of victim rights, including those of our children. And your role can be as simple as speaking up. Concerned about uncollected garbage at home? Do you see garbage piling up on the streets? Then report it. Use the National Solid Waste Management Authority's mobile app to report instances of littering, illegal dumping and uncollected garbage. From anywhere and at any time, be an environment warden by informing the authority of unsightly solid waste. You will be notified when your report has been received by the NSWMA as well as when the matter is resolved. Download the app from the iOS or Android app stores by typing in NSWMA. Play your part, as Jamaica's beauty is everybody's duty. The facilitation and continuation of businesses in Jamaica, in fact anywhere, is necessary for national development. With that thought at the forefront, our leaders have sought to create an IT platform that simplifies the process of doing business in Jamaica. Watch this next feature for a much simpler explanation. Picture this, you're a busy entrepreneur working hard to grow your business. At the wharf to be cleared are the materials needed to make your products. You are required to visit several government offices and fill out multiple forms with similar information to complete this activity, spending time on the trading process that could otherwise be invested in your business. For you, this may just be a mental exercise. But for many entrepreneurs in Jamaica, it is the reality of trade. A reality that will change with the introduction of the Jamaica Electronic Single Window for Trade. An Electronic Single Window ESW is an IT platform that facilitates the efficient clearance of cargo. An Electronic Single Window is expected to bring simplification, harmonization and facilitation on international trade transactions under a robust um, electronic environment. This will bring facilities for customs brokers, government officials to interact with a computerized systems that will have a set of business rules that will allow the traders to fulfill all regulatory requirements, submit all the required data, and be able to complete their transactions in a single and seamless system. With that electronic single window for trade, clearly it's an electronic form and that will be filled out one time at your convenience, online and then behind the scene, you know, the BRAs, the Border Related Agency, will collaborate to ensure that your application is um, accepted. The agencies connected to the system will be able to grant the necessary permits, licenses and approval for the release of merchandise. When approval is given, the trader receives a notification and can then proceed to collect or send off goods. The introduction of an ESW will reduce the cost and time it takes to import and export goods, creating a more enabling environment for local entrepreneurs and foreign investors. Where we can uh, develop and implement a system where all the transactions can take place through a particular port or point or window in this instance, it makes doing business easier. By extension, therefore, it is expected that the interest 
um, in conducting business will be improved, will be increased, and uh, investors will see Jamaica as an even more attractive investor destination. On the other side, it also will aid the, in the collection of, of, of revenue, where we can have a greater throughput of trade and of activity, which by extension generates even much more in terms of the economy. Implementation of the ESW began in August 2018, and the timeline for completion is 36 months. Over 20 border and regulatory government agencies will connect to the platform. The entity responsible for collecting revenue from trade, the Jamaica Customs Agency, is the lead implementing agency. The electronic single window system will be fully integrated, with, of course, with the Ascuda World system. And they're both built on the Ascuda World platform. That information will be passed seamlessly within the, from the electronic single window into the customs management system. And that, of course, reduces time and complexity, having a single point of contact and simplification of information. So that transparent environment, having that electronic uh, track and trace, and of course, ensuring that persons are carrying out their functions within the agreed time frame. The ESW is projected to reduce the number of entities a trader comes in contact with from as much as five to one. In the future, this is how a trader could be making arrangements for the clearance of goods. The Jamaica Electronic Single Window, facilitating efficiency in trade, contributing to a robust business environment, a part of the framework for making it easier to do business with Jamaica. So besides what we've heard and seen earlier in the show, our technological capacity and creations are far more extensive and impactful. In today's Hear This, we'll share with you how we're using science and technology in Jamaica to protect your health, safeguard lives, and ultimately make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. So here goes. Number one. Authorized system launched for fully vaccinated persons to purchase football match tickets. This was created specifically for spectators to safely attend the Jamaica World Cup qualifying game against the United States inside the National Stadium on November 16. Number two, the Health Ministry signs ICT contract with CNW Jamaica. This contract is for CNW Jamaica Limited to manage the private network services for more than 100 health facilities. The project will cover storage, hardware sites, servers, backups, disaster recovery, as well as network and workstation, cybersecurity, and help desk support. Number three, genome sequencing machine to test for COVID variants. With one of these machines now in our possession, the country can do its own testing for the new COVID-19 variant strains, increasing Jamaica's capacity to respond to emerging health challenges. As today's magazine comes to an end, I want you to feed on these powerful words from sociologist and writer Daniel Bell. Technology, like art, is a soaring exercise of the human imagination. My question is, what are you imagining today? As always, thanks for sticking through the Jamaica Magazine journey. You can get a refresher of this and others at the GIS YouTube channel. Don't forget to also visit our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for more information. From all of us here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Take good care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.